put your hands together for our performers. Fia. You are standing in the fields of Flanders, sipping wine in a bulletproof vest, and your smug survival shines through. I am sick of your well-loved worldly grief. I am sick of your manly hands convinced any words will do. I am sick of the applause, the pats on your back, the badly covered tracks of your boring, quotidian joy. I am sick. I am sick, they will say, when it all tumbles down to prose. And it will, and they will, and it will be prose, even though the lines are broken. We met on opposite ends of a panic attack. You knew what the light at the end of the tunnel tasted like when you saw my lips, and I felt in you the slow rumble of static that purrs the engine of anxiety from its sleeping. I was too afraid to kiss you. I'm still too afraid to kiss you. It wasn't sexual innuendo when I said I loved your hands, but believe me, I've thought about it. I just have this thing about self-worth. Sometimes I feel like a hefty price tag on pre-weathered jeans. I don't understand why someone would pay so much for something already torn. I don't look you in the eye much, because when I do, I feel like an orchid beneath boots. You carry your threshold like a gateway drug. I'm afraid that if I enter, I'll stay intoxicated forever. And I have seen enough of buses and airplanes to know that people leaving always looks the same from far away. I have a hard enough time getting off the phone with a fucking bill collector without feeling abandoned. I've only held things before that were sharp and small, but there is no pixie in you. You are a cloud of smoke, guitar riffs. You are the birth scars from clever girls who have seen enough unrequited love to suspect the sunlight of indifference. Come in from the cold. Let me woo you with too soon, because I am tired of love feeling like a milk carton. I don't want to have to wake up and smell it every day, half expecting it to have gone bad. I want love to forget itself in us, so it becomes less of a leap and more of an honest choice. We are all so afraid of falling in love the second, third, fourth, fifth time around when real love is not a jump, but a step to the side so that someone may take our place and feel what it's like to inhabit the space of us. Now I know poetry is kind of creepy, and I just met you, and that is scary enough, but I want you to know that if you enter me, there is a place in all of us where there is no storm, where love is peaceful and quiet. And there's nothing about it to be afraid of. If I listen closely, I can hear the tap, tap, tapping of a bird on a windowsill against a background of my deeply unsettled feelings. And I think it is trying to tell me something in a desperately frantic alien code. Though, if it is actually trying to give me a message, then I suppose that is as much horrifying as it is fascinating. We are in the realm of monsters now. And what is the right response to the monsters when you just can't look away? I don't really need a starling to come up and tap some secret coded message on my window because every fibre of my very own being is screaming, get out. Get out, get out, get out, and do not make eye contact and do not attempt to look back. So I watch myself on screen in what is not so much a sequel as a reboot of my own personal Halloween. I am Drew Barrymore screaming in the darkness into a cordless brick phone that has no dial tone. I run back inside to get away from the bird and I roar at myself, do not go into the house because we all know how that ends. 
but the bird's gentle tap, tap, tap continues. You could leave this right now. And I plead with myself, Jesus Christ, do not go up the stairs. I cannot look away from myself as Drew darting upstairs to the relative safety of an attic lined entirely with funhouse mirrors. I ask a reflection. How the fuck do I get out of here? And the mirror replies, I hear you are looking at your exit options, which is essentially true, but I guess, but not exactly accurate. I always thought the best kind of horror film was the one nobody realises is horror at all. I remember this production the first time around and I didn't particularly enjoy it then either, but I'm already here and it's exceedingly clear to all concerned. It's a bit late now to avoid things that go bump in the night, or the tap, tap, tap on the window, or the thud, thud, thud of footsteps following, and it doesn't particularly matter which room I go in because the tapping and thudding will follow. One hard tap shatters the glass, and the starling is beside me now. And one.